everybody, I'm Beth Davis and welcome to Teachable Tuesday, where every week we discover God's heart and are changed by his word. And I am being changed by this word, Proverbs 4.23. We're spending four weeks talking about one verse. Why? Because it's that good. It is that rich. So grab a Bible. You're going to need it, not just for Proverbs 4.23, but all of the beautiful scripture that we're going to talk through and talk about today. So let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord, illuminate our hearts by this word. Convict our hearts according to your word. Lord, we know that when you come, when you bring that conviction, you bring lightness, you bring freedom, you bring joy. So we welcome you, Lord, into our hearts once again. Would you actually pray that? Jesus, I give you my heart again today. Jesus, I, I renew my love for you. I renew my dedication to you. Jesus, I invite you into my heart. In your name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Proverbs 4, 23. Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. A few years ago uh, for Lent, I asked the Lord, as is my custom, God, what do you want me to do for Lent? And it was in my uh, time, spending time with the Lord in the morning, just this beautiful, relational, devotional time. And very gently, I heard the Lord respond, don't say anything negative about yourself. And I thought, well, that's weird. <laughs> I don't really say anything negative about myself. I might occasionally think something negative about myself, but I'm not one of those people, you know, those like self-deprecating people who's always saying something negative about myself. That's not me, Lord. So either that's not you, God, or I'm gonna have a really easy Lent. <laughs> so I went on with my time of prayer. The Lord just very lovingly sort of dropped it, but it was, it stuck around, you know, when God speaks, it really lands. And so I, I got ready for the day and it was kind of a weird morning, you know, one of those days where like, uh, I just didn't feel good in anything I tried on. I changed my outfit a couple of different times and my hair just wasn't working. Gals, you know what I mean? Sometimes it's just like a weird hair day and it's not cooperating. And so I was just feeling a little awkward, a little uncomfortable in my own body, but Anyway, this is just a, a normal day. I got ready for work. I, I drove into the office and when I pulled in, I checked the rear view mirror as is my custom. I think most people, right? Just a little double check in the mirror. And I caught myself saying out loud as I looked at my reflection in the mirror, wow, Beth, looking rough today. And I clasped my hand over my mouth. I could not believe that I said something negative about myself. I said out loud, Lord, I do say negative things about myself. It was totally shocking and eye-opening to me. I was very unaware that these were the words coming out of my mouth. I was surprised to hear myself talk, to, talk like that, but Jesus, Jesus says that it comes out of my mouth because it's what's in my heart. This is Luke chapter 6. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. The truth is what we talk about isn't nearly as casual as we would like to think. The words that come out of our mouth are only the articulation of what we believe more deeply in our hearts. So for the past few weeks in this series called Heart Check, we've been examining our hearts, examining what's in our hearts. Last week, we focused on the condition of our hearts and the reality that, well, they're too full. Oftentimes our hearts are over full. In our heart's desire for satisfaction, we often take matters into our own hands. Tale as old as time, right? God promises Abraham a son. He doesn't want to wait. Uh, well, 
let me be fair to the guy. He waited a long time, but finally he and his wife, they're getting desperate, they're getting older. And so they took matters into their own hands and they had another son by her maid, Hagar. They, they weren't willing to wait on the Lord to fulfill the desires of their heart. So they sought to fulfill their own desire, to fulfill the Lord's word on their own terms. We do this in our own lives. We turn lesser goods like entertainment, like food into fulfillment, hoping that they'll satisfy the deepest desires of our hearts. Even natural goods we do this with. Take something like relationships with other people. Uh, they can become uh, disordered when we try to satisfy our infinite desire for God. That's where these desires come from that feel bottomless. These infinite desires because we were made by God, for God, to live forever with God. And yet we take them to things and to people who are finite in order to satisfy these infinite longings. So oftentimes we find ourselves stuffed over full of input and information, distraction that does nothing to quench the deepest desires of our heart for love for union and how we need to fast from the counterfeit in order to make room and develop a hunger for spiritual things for god himself that's what we talked about last week the condition of our hearts the over fullness of our hearts this week i want to invite you to maybe uh explore expose the condition of our hearts in another way i want to invite you to look at the output the output of your hearts. If you want to become familiar with what's hidden in the depths of your heart, what you really believe, who you really are, and if you want to become familiar with your need for a savior, listen to yourself talk. That's it, listen to your own words. So let's revisit our anchoring scripture, Proverbs 4.23. This is the ideal, okay? Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. Now, remember, this is from our very first week, that from a Jewish perspective and in Christian anthropology, the heart or the soul represents both the center of and the whole human person. And from a heart united with God, a heart made in his image and renewed in his likeness. In the words of Jesus, from that heart shall flow rivers of living water. That's, that's the promise. That's the, the goal. That's what our hearts were made for. Now, back to Proverbs 4.23. Now, if you're reading it in a Bible, which I hope that you are, grab your Bible. I want to look at the next verse. I want to draw your attention to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 24. Put away from you crooked speech and put devious talk far from you. Curious, right? We're talking about the heart and then suddenly this pivot to talk about our words. Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. Put away from you crooked speech and put devious talk far from you. So here again, there's a connection between what's in our hearts, what's in the words that we speak. One flows from the other. What's in our hearts and what comes out of our mouth. Or to borrow another metaphor from Jesus. This is Luke 6 again. No good tree bears bad fruit. Nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit, for each tree is known by its own fruits. Figs are not gathered from thorns, nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. Okay, pause. We're going to pick this up in a minute. But if our hearts are good, that is, if our hearts are pure, because your heart is good, your heart is good, but a heart that's been purified, a heart made in his image, renewed in his likeness, a, a pure heart, the fruit of that pure heart that is produced in our lives are good, true, and beautiful words. But if our hearts are full of superficiality, right? Like all this digital distraction, or if our hearts are 
frankly, full of sin. I know that's an unpopular word. We don't want to, to think about that. You know, I don't have mortal sin. I, I, I'm a good person. I, I love Jesus. But if we're not looking, if we're not examining our hearts for sin, mortal and venial sin, anything short of purity of heart, anything short of the perfection of Jesus. Now, here I go. I'm getting on a soapbox, so buckle up. Jesus says, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. That's, that's the benchmark. That's the standard. That's what we're being made into. Made in his image, renewed in his likeness. He's calling us to be perfect. So by that standard, perfection, purity of heart, the purity of heart of Jesus, We've got a ways to go, right? So when we look at this uh, superficiality and sin in our soul, our lives, our words will be negative, will be judgmental, will be critical, will be despairing. If you find that your words are negative, judgmental, critical, or despairing, perhaps there is some sin, some superficiality in your heart. Jesus spells it out explicitly. This is the end of that section of Luke 6. The good person out of the good treasure of the heart produces good. And the evil treasure, uh, the evil person out of the evil treasure produces evil. For it is out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. So listen to yourself talk. What is the fruit of your words? What's the overflow, the abundance of your heart? How do you speak? What words do you use? In what tone do you use them? What words? Listen to your words. What's the subject matter of a normal conversation with your coworker, with your spouse, with your best friend? Maybe look back at your texts. What's the motivation behind your words. And listen, if that's what we say out loud, what about all those words we think and don't say? It's estimated that we say between 300 and 1,000 words to ourselves per minute. 300 to 1,000 words to ourselves per minute. That's a lot of words. It's a lot of data to consider. So much of our thoughts, right? So many of our thoughts are unconscious and automatic. That's what the Lord revealed to me during Lent. My words and the meditations of my heart. Oh, those are the words of, of, of David in the Psalms. Let the words of my heart, uh, the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my God. So the, uh, there again, that connection between heart and words. My words and the meditations of my heart were not pleasing to God. He didn't want me to talk about myself in that way. And I was not only saying those things out loud, I was thinking them all the time, 300 to 1,000 words per minute, largely without even realizing it, because they were the overflow. They were the abundance of my heart. They were deeply seated beliefs in my heart, my thoughts, and eventually my words represented what was going on in my heart. And the same is true for you. Now, the writer of Proverbs is saying that if we want to have a pure heart, and I don't know about you, but I want to have a pure heart. I, I want to have a heart like Jesus, a heart that overflows with life-giving water then we have to guard not only our thoughts, but our words, our words. So how do we change our words? Well, here again, let's revisit Proverbs 4, 24. The writer of Proverbs urges us to put away from you all crooked speech and put devious talk far from you. So those are our two categories. Okay, if we want to change our words, let's change our crooked speech and our devious 
talk. This might sound like very dated language, but I'm gonna make it real modern for you here and, and very vulnerably share with you that crooked speech was a specialty of mine. I was proud of my crooked speech. I loved that I had crooked speech, but I loved Jesus. I thought it made me kind of cool. I thought it made me uh, very normal and relatable, right? It gave me kind of an edge. I wasn't like, I wasn't like a religious person, right? I like, I was cool. Oh, the pride in this, as I'm telling you, my goodness, I'm just being convicted again. So if you haven't figured it out yet, I am using crooked speech here synonymously with cussing. I, I loved cussing. I, again, for all of those reasons I just stated, but by God's grace, I began to just toss it into my confession, mostly because I had a friend a few years previously who prayed, quote, I pray those words start to taste like ash in your mouth. I wasn't intending to tell you that, but it was kind of hardcore. It was a little bit intense. I love you, Jody. God bless you. Thank you for praying for me all those years. Forgive me for offending you with my crooked speech for all of those years. God have mercy on me. So I had this witness in my life, right? I had this person encouraging me to put crooked speech away from me, right? Put away from you. That's right. Far. Well, that's the next part. We're not just putting it away from us. We're putting it far away from us. And so I began to toss cussing into my confession. And I will never forget, I was at SEEK in 2020. I was standing by a large column. I know exactly where I was in the Phoenix Convention Center. I was confessing to my dear friend and a good and holy priest named Father Dan. And there was plenty in that confession, let me tell you. Don't be under any illusions. I am a sinner just like anybody else. Not proud of that desperate for the grace of the sacrament. So there I was in the lobby of the Phoenix Convention Center confessing my sins to Father Dan. And here, you know, just to keep it interesting, to kind of fluff it up, I confessed cussing. And Father Dan, of everything I confessed, he stood there. Uh, this is a Father Dan impression. This is how he stands. And he looked at me and he said, Beth, you cannot preach the gospel and cuss out of the same mouth. And that cut me to the heart. I do not want to be a hypocrite. I do not want to speak words of life, the saving words of the gospel out of this mouth. I do not want to proclaim the good news of Jesus and, and, and speak so flippantly, speak so offensively in private. It didn't make me cool. It made me a hypocrite. And I was so deeply convicted and grieved. It brought joy. It didn't bring sadness. It, it, it brought um, this fiery conviction and power. And that was the end of my career, cussing. Now pay attention. If, if the Holy Spirit is convicting you too, I'm in it with you. I'm, I'm on your team. I'm on your side. Today, can we... Can we together, can we decide no more cussing? No more cussing. I do not want to speak words of life. I do not want to preach the gospel, which you are called to preach the gospel in your own context, in your neighborhood, in your relationships, from your heart, your personal witness. I don't want to speak the words of life and at the same time curse and speak words of death. In Jesus name okay so crooked speech we're putting that far away from us and we're putting away from us devious talk what is devious talk anything double-minded right like lying like gossip and a scripture that helped me tremendously with my penchant right my desire to like say something negative or make a little comment or give my opinion is Psalm 141 I memorized and began to pray fervently pray lord put a watch over my mouth lest i sin against you with my tongue the same way that israel would put watchmen on the wall right to watch for the dawn to wait for the coming of the lord uh, to herald any news of an enemy coming or of the king returning 
The same way a watchman was put on the wall, I want to watch over my mouth. Draw up the bridge, Lord. Shut my mouth so that I do not sin against you with my tongue. This scripture is incredibly powerful for that. But I want you too to consider sharing it with a friend. Share your desire to stop cussing. Jenna has been phenomenal, such a, a source of accountability and encouragement, such a witness of this to me, this purity of speech, because I desire purity of heart. And as we talked about today, as Jesus says again and again, as the scriptures connect again and again, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. So my friends, if you want to change your heart, start by changing your words. Let's pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, we bless you. We love you. We praise you. We thank you. We repent of our sins, Lord, the sins of our mouth, the ways we've sinned against you and sinned against others, sinned against ourselves with our tongue, Lord. Would you create in us a clean heart, Lord, so that, so that out of the overflow of our heart, true and good and beautiful words, words of life, life-giving waters would flow, not only from our hearts, Lord, but from our mouths. We pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you, friends. See you next week. Bye.